Oh Lord my God When I in awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thy hand has made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder The power throughout the universe displayed Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art And when I think That God his son not sparing Sent him to die I scarce can take it in That on the cross My burden gladly bearing He bled and died To take away my sin Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee I'm Jim Meyer. Happy Easter! And I'm Raul Garcia. And happy Easter to you too. And I'm Dan Dorr. Thanks for being a part of this worship service when we celebrate what we celebrate throughout the year that Christ is risen! He, he has risen, risen indeed. indeed! Hallelujah! Christ is risen! He, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed! Hallelujah! Thanks for being a part of this worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the beginning, your Spirit moved over the waters by your word. You created the world. These waters give life to our planet. We give, we give thanks, thanks, O God, God for, for the waters, waters of, of life. life. Noah and his family were rescued through the flood waters. Your people Israel were delivered through the sea to freedom. In the Jordan, your people were guided into the promised land. We, we give, give thanks, thanks, O God, God for the for waters, waters of salvation. salvation. We give you thanks for the entry into Jesus' death by this water, for our new life of freedom and generosity in this water, and for our calling to bring life to the world through this water. We, we give, give thanks, thanks, O God, for the waters of baptism, baptism. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with, with you. you. pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he's alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. But there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond Jordan, Galilee of nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with the righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
A reading from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with the power he how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for the God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one whom Jesus loved. And he said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went to the tomb. The two were running toward together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he might rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lain one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Have you taken away my Lord? And I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she returned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be a gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned, and she said to him in Hebrew, Rabbani, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that she said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Happy Easter to you all. 
And the special word of well wishes and God's grace and love to those who may be tuning into this Elam online service for the first time. A special word of Happy Easter to those of you who are worshiping online with us right now who used to call Elam their church home in person. Not too long ago, I officiated a memorial service and, and met uh, some family members and neighbors of one of our deceased members who used to frequent this sanctuary long ago. And I, I greeted them and said, well, come on by and visit Elam sometime in the coming weeks and months. It'd be nice to see you. I know that some of you are worshiping with us right now. And I'm going to share some information with you about Elam today. Now, Elam today has many of the things you remember about Elam. But we are challenged with some important decisions to make in the coming weeks and months. I'm going to catch everybody up on those important decisions we're making. First off, we're not fully using our facilities like we once did. We don't have the numbers of children and young people in our faith formation fa uh, programs that we once did. Our Sunday school classrooms are just a fraction of once, what they once were. Our youth events are far fewer than they once were. The people gathered in our sanctuary are far fewer than once upon a time. But our congregation is still here. And with the generosity of people who have left legacy gifts, we're doing okay financially. We're not in desperate times, but we're in different times. We're a small church. Just a few decades ago, we could have described our church as a large church. We're smaller now. But there is strength. There are qualities that we are enjoying as a small church that we're benefiting from. But the reality is we don't need this large facility any longer. In fact, in a way, a large facility that needs to be cooled and warmed throughout the seasons, a large facility that needs repair and maintenance and replacement of elements can be a financial burden to a small congregation. About two and a half, three years ago, we were approached by a property developer. As many of you know, there are a number of residential developments that are going in on our block or in the blocks near us. And we've been offered, we've been offered upwards of $3 million to sell off substantial portions of our property. The council has been discerning this possibility for two or more years. We've met with developers. We have a realtor. 
The council in recent months has recommended to current members that it would be a wise decision for us to sell off half of our parking lot, to allow for development to go in on the property uh, along Botno Boulevard, for us to lose the part of the building that we built in 1961, but to retain the building that we used up until 1961, the worship space, the classrooms adjacent to the worship space, the lower level, all of the building that was well suited for a congregation in the 30s and 40s. And the reality is, this is the most important part of our facility. It's the part of our facility that we use more often than not. It's the part of our facility where our worship space is, and we are closer in size to the church of the 1930s than we are to the church of the 1970s and 80s. The resources that we would gain from the sale of that portion of our property would allow us to make sure that the building we continue to operate in is current accessible to those who are less mobile, with electrical and heating and cooling systems that are up to date, furnishings, flooring, that keeps the classic look, but it's current and state of the art. In summary, we've been offered an opportunity to reallocate resources from real estate to enhancements and for us to move forward in the coming decades with a facility that's not as large, but a facility that's up to date. We've had monthly discussions. We've had boards and committee members involved in listening sessions. And we will have a congregational vote on Sunday, June 5th, about whether or not to proceed with this real estate transaction. You see, it requires a congregational meeting to approve whether or not we move forward in this way. Now on Easter Sunday, it's tempting for me to apply the resurrection theme to ideas of the new life we will experience when enough congregants vote yes and approve us to move forward with this real estate transaction and upcoming enhancements to our building. But I'm going to avoid that temptation because the stories of Scripture in these last few days of Holy Week and today call us to look at the resurrection not simply as a new look or an enhancement and not even as simply as a new vitality. The story of Jesus' Last Supper, his passion and his resurrection We're about a different sort of transformation. Not one that's described by new looks, updated amenities, it's the sort of transformation that's eternal. A sort of transformation that can get overlooked by someone not immersed in the Paschal mystery, not immersed in the message of Jesus' good news. No. The transformation 
that's reflected in these scriptures runs deep to the soul, not superficial. And though Elam Lutheran Church is at a point in time where some bold decisions are about to be made and possibly some really important changes are about to occur, the sort of transformation described in Scripture has been happening throughout the decades at Elam. The sort of transformation described in these scriptures has been happening throughout the years. Through the years when this sanctuary has been full and the years when this sanctuary has only had a third of the people it once did. It's the same transformation at work in our everyday lives a transformation that happens when people gather together and form friendship. When people gather together and, and find the courage and take the risk to say, I'm Dan, we haven't met before. People have formed friendship in this congregation for a century. And the people of this congregation will continue to form friendships in this building, just like they did in the building that was here in the 40s. And this congregation will continue to build friendships, whether or not Narathan Hall is there in the decades to come. In fact, Pastor Ward Narathan would have us remember that in this time of discernment. We are here to imitate Christ and to become a part of each other's lives, to give witness to each other about the power of God's word. On Thursday, we recalled the Last Supper. On Thursday, Jesus reminded his disciples that it's important to pass the cup amongst each other. It's important to break bread together. But we ought not forget what that sacrament does to our lives. We become the body of Christ for each other when we share that sacrament at the table. And Jesus' words 20 centuries ago were intended to help make that reality come to fruition. The love and friendship that Jesus shows his disciples, the love and friendship we show to each other sacramentally at that table and communally in our gathering spaces is supernatural is what we're called to it does save lives it does save souls just simply ask the people around us talk to the people throughout the generations who have called Elam their church home that's real That is the sort of transformation that has been happening, that's happening now, and that we plan to have happen here decades to come. But the reality is, it's not our work. It's God's work amidst us. And there are countless Miracle stories of God being present in the life of this congregation that I've heard in just my four short years here that I know are part of the legacy of Elam going back throughout the first 10 decades of Elam. We are a part
part of a faith community that is alive, that has a legacy, but also is positioned to have a future. That legacy will be preserved and that future will be realized regardless of whether we choose to sell a good portion of our property or not. As long as we remember that the sort of transformation we are about at Elam Lutheran Church on the corner of West Broadway and 40th Avenue is the sort of transformation that touches our soul. It's not superficial. That's rooted in the friendship that we share here. Regardless of what part of the facility we might be in. That's rooted in the sacraments of God's church. The example of Christ. And the miracle of God's grace at work in a community of faith. Happy Easter. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. On this day of resurrection joy, let us offer our prayers for ourselves, for our neighbors, and our world.
renewing God, the gospel, the good news of the resurrection changed the world. Give church leaders and all the baptized the same excitement as the women at the tomb and inspire us to share your abundant life. Merciful God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Sustaining God, your creation abounds with signs of new life and budding trees and newborn creatures. Provide per fertile soil, ample sunlight, and nourishing rain for the growth of plants. And provide farmers with a plentiful harvest. Merciful God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Sheltering God, strengthen and sustain all who support vulnerable people across the world, especially those serving the people of Ukraine. Empower government agencies and international organizations that provide for migrants and refugees forced to leave their homelands. Merciful God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Encouraging God, you do a new thing among us. We pray for those gripped by fear and anxiety or who suffer in any way. Send us as your healing presence to places of hunger, pain, illness, or overwhelming sorrow. Merciful God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Surprising God, you offer endless ways for us to delight in your grace. Give this community of faith a sense of joy and wonder in exploring new avenues of faith formation, worship, and discipleship. Lord, merciful God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Resurrecting God, you make us alive in Christ. Thank you for blessing us with faithful witnesses who now rest in you. Merciful God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We offer to you these petitions and those we carry in our hearts, trusting in your abundant and ever-present mercy. Amen. Amen. We offer our prayers and we offer our resources. Thank you for your giving. Because of your giving, we proclaim the good news of Easter throughout the year with faith formation opportunities for young and old, with service and outreach endeavors in our neighborhoods and communities around us. Thank you for your support. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give, give him, him thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection with earth and sea, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we join in praising your name and singing their unending hymn. God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal is your reign. 
You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at this end of all ages, the gift of your son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to praise and glorify you through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The meal is prepared. Come. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Blessed Jesus, at this table you have been for us both host and meal. Now send us forth to extend our tables and to share your gifts until that day when all feast together, we all feast together at your heavenly banquet. Amen. Amen. The Holy Trinity, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. Face towards